Catch it now. Catch it. Hey, Patochi. Patochi, if you've got money to throw away, throw it at me. All right. Mr. Grumbach. <laughs> I wouldn't take it. Greenhorn is sleeping again. In America, we stay awake. But, Mr. Grumbach, she wasn't exactly sleeping. Now, close your mouth. Let your cousin tell her own lies. I don't tell lies, Mr. Grumbach. I was sleeping. Mm -hmm. But only because there is no air in here. Oh, no air. Well, it's the same air for everybody. Am I sleeping? Is she sleeping? Maybe you're doing me a favor working here altogether. I forgot, Miss Kepper. In the old country, you once had a home with 1,500 plum trees. Uh-uh, 3,000. My mistake. If you went to bed nights, instead of taking work home and holding on to four other jobs, you wouldn't fall asleep on my time. Not that it happened again. Uh -huh. Tonight, right after supper, you go to bed. Hey, Mr. Grumbach. You better watch out. Mm. The Emmys are coming. How do you do, gentlemen? Uh, is there anything I can do for you? Immigration department. Oh, just a routine inspection. But, uh, gentlemen, I don't keep here no girls who sneak into the country. I didn't say you did. No, you didn't say I did. Hello. Oh. Let me see your passport, miss. Yes, sir. Right here. You weren't here the last time we were around? No, sir. How long have you been in the United States? Four months. All right. Now, you see, everything is in order. Keep your shirt on. Anyone else new back here? What are you so nervous about? You didn't do anything. I know, but to be sent back now would be terrible. Would ruin all my plans. They only send you back if you do something bad. <laughs> You've got quite a few girls here, Grumbach. Oh, yes. And the first thing I ask from the girl is the passport. Oh, sure. I never broke no regulations in my life. That's fine, Mr. Grumbach. We'll be around again soon. Yes. <laughs> Don't hurry. <laughs> what are you sweating about? Crap. A man ain't safe in this country until he's a citizen. Get them out of bundles. Yes, sir. No. Pledge of Allegiance. Where's the Pledge of Allegiance? Mother, yeah. Um, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the, to the republic on which it stands. One nation in, uh, um, in, um, uh, one nation invisible with liberty and justice for all. Don't take home any work. I told you. Tonight, right after supper, you go to sleep. But you know I have to work. But you didn't come to America to kill yourself. Now, don't worry about me. I'm as strong as a horse leash. Hey, Mark Denick's back. He is. He's outside fighting with Riley the cop. Who is Denick? Mark Denick is a no-good tramp. Neighborhood troublemaker. And every respectable person should keep away from him. According to the law, this man has every right to play. And I'm telling you, Denick, his license is up and he hasn't renewed it. His license is up. One day past due and you're going to deprive this man of his bread and butter? Is that justice? No! Is that the spirit of America? No! There you are, Riley. Go ahead and play. Thank you, sir. Listen, Denick. I told you to stop that thing. Oh, now, what kind of a public servant are you anyway, Riley? You can't live by the letter of the law. I saw you spit on the sidewalk. When? Uh, on the uh, 29th of May, before I went out to the country. Why didn't you stay up in the country? I could have you arrested for that. It's been nice and quiet around here for the last three months. I'll go on up in the next beat and annoy Officer Quinn. Yeah, well, if I get any complaints, I will. Here, let me play that thing, will Denick, you? Denick, you're disturbing the peace. 
Get away from here before I lose me temper and run you in. Oh, uh, now you've gone too far. You're threatening a citizen with false arrest. You know, the last time I had trouble with you, Riley, I told you that when I became alderman, I'd send you up to 86th Street to patrol the cow pastures. When you become alderman... Yeah, I'll bring you a milk pail. <laughs> Come on, move on. Come on, move on. Break it up. Take it easy, Riley. All right, Gabriel, go ahead and play. And don't forget, whenever you're in trouble, remember the name. Denick. Thank you, sir. Take care of yourself, Riley. Don't steal too many apples. Hey, Riley, why don't you run that fresh guy in? You never could tell about Denick. It'd be just like him to become an alderman. What did I tell you? He's just a big mouth. Miss Yulishka. I mean, Jenny. I think you're right about him. Low life. Still, he took the organ grinder's part. Are you defending him? No, but he did talk back to the policeman. Takes a lot of courage to talk back to a policeman. Especially if the policeman is right. There should be a law against those things. Yes, Mrs. Faludi. Hurry up, kid. The borders are waiting. Everybody's hungry right tonight. Right away, Mrs. Faludi. I just put on my apron. Just a minute. You got a letter from your papa. Oh, good. Here. It, it came this morning already, right after you left. But don't read it till after supper. Emile? Emile, come your hair, Kuchin. Supper is almost ready. Yes, my dear. Mrs. Faludi! Mrs. Faludi! Mrs. Faludi! Yes? I'm home. Denick is home. I heard already. I got a surprise for you. Yeah? <laughs> it's not your home till you pay the rent. Oh, now, Mrs. Faludi, is that a way to greet a man who's been away for three months, who's been longing for your cooking all this time, who's been thinking of you every mm. minute? The rent, the rent you owe me since last spring. Three months the room has been empty. Did I ever get a letter from you? A, a word from you? I sent you a postcard, didn't I? How could I send you a letter? How could I? What would your fiancé think? Uh, you still got the same one. Which one was it when you were here? Uh, Rudolph. No. Huh? Ah. The next Mr. Faludi's name is, uh, Emil. Oh. Mm. He's got his own barber shop. Well, then, what are you worrying about money for? Never mind. Here, it's the same as a streetcar. Pay as you enter. Now, listen, come here. What do you think I've been doing since I stepped off the ferry this morning? I've been going around to all the places I worked before. I got all my old jobs back, all five of them. In a few days, I'll be loaded with money. And then I'll not only pay you the rent, but will you get a present? Mm, smoocher. <laughs> <laughs> the same old Mrs. Faludi. <laughs> Mrs. Faludi, starvation corner. This place is for Mr. Grumbach. Oh, Grumbach. What you doing in my chair? Glad to see you back. Get up. My star order. How many stars in the flag, Grumbach? Don't ask me questions until I pay you to ask me questions. <laughs> I got a new price this season for people who want to pass their citizenship examinations. Fifty cents. What do you mean? And for people like you who fail three times, seventy-five cents. <laughs> <laughs> Ginger? Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Come on, Dolly, give her food. New here, huh? She's my cousin. She just came over. Since when we start at the bottom of the table, Mr. Grumbach is first. You're making a big mistake, Mrs. Faludi, putting me in starvation corner. If I starve to death, I'll never be able to pay her the back rent. Not only that, if I die in the house, you'll have to bury me and pay for the funeral. Hey, Jenny? Big mouth. Danny, since he came in, he didn't close his mouth yet. <laughs> my friend, Otto. <laughs> I thought maybe he'd find a nice girl in the mountains, huh? He'd come back a uh, uh, settled, married man. Me married? Not on your tin type. I've got more important things to think about. Uh, here it is, sir. I agree. There are more important things than marriage. Sure. 
Hey, you speak English. Mm -hmm. And fancy English, too. Mm -hmm. What kind of a greenhorn are you? Well, my papa taught me English. Huh? And French. French. And music. Music. French and English and music, huh? Sir, never mind. Let her talk. Look at what there's left for me. <coughs> now, you see? Talk, talk, talk. Too much talk. A man can't eat in quiet, so of course, you know, gas, indigestion, palpitations. He's right. Everybody, shut up. But I didn't... Shut up, Pupshin. Oh, sure. Get the should dispossess them, all eight of them. What have they got to sing about? Eight Cossacks in one room. Now what? Now what? One little room. They sleep in layers. The ones on top have to go to work in the morning. Hey, Jenny. It's your beer bar. Hermann. Oh. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hello. Herman, Good, darling. I'll be ready in a minute. Hmm. Mm. Eating, huh? Hey. When are you going to get a head on your beer, Herman? When you get a head on your head, Mr. Attorney. <laughs> you should live so long. <laughs> Herman's beer is served in the finest places. Yeah, yeah. Well, be sure to give me a list of them, so I'll know where not to go. Riff raff. Riff raff. Come on, Herman. Oh, and remember, tonight, right after supper, you'll go to sleep. I can't. You know I have to work at Wunderlies tonight. Work, Come on. Work. Well, good night, all. Pleasant appetite. Good night, Herman. Uh, Don't overdo it. Gally, bring the coffee. Yes, ma'am. Uh, did I hear you say something about working at Wunderlears? Yes, I take the coats and give the head checks. Oh. Well, uh, wait a minute. There's no use going tonight. Why not? Well, I went around there this afternoon to see about getting my old job of boxer back. Uh, there was a meeting of the Hibernian Society going on, and somebody made a remark about Teddy Roosevelt, and I didn't like it. What happened? Nothing much. Place will reopen tomorrow. Oh. I'd have made 50 cents there tonight. Do you really need a job that much? Oh, it's very important. Oh, why didn't you say so? I know everybody. I can get you hundreds of jobs. Come on, get your hat and coat. Are you sure? Because I could make 15 cents here at Mrs. Faludi's washing the dishes. Now, what do you want to do that for? I can get you a job that'll be much better than washing dishes. Come on. I don't understand it. You shouldn't have made such big promises. Well, the business season hasn't started yet, but in about a month, you'll see. A month? Don't be so downhearted. Why don't we try a few more places, huh? Mr. Denick, you cost me a great deal of money tonight. I could have made 15 cents at Mrs. Faludi's, and I could have sold a whole bundle of ties instead of walking around for three hours. Look, is it my fault that all of a sudden there's an oversupply of help and an undersupply of the need for it? You're a very fortunate man. Thanks. Your charming wife looks just like her lovely sister. Oh, thank you. Have a cigar? Hello. Hello. Uh, well, thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Mr. Dugan. <laughs> oh, well, if it isn't Mark Denick, I'm glad to see you back. I want you to meet an acquaintance of mine, Miss uh, Tisa Kepish, Assemblyman Dugan. Well, any friend of Mark's is a friend of mine. You know, he's a good worker. The party's got its eye on him. Anything you want me to do, Mr. Dugan, you know I'm always at your service. Well, we missed you at headquarters, boy. Why don't you drop around tomorrow? You know, there's work to be done. I'll be around. Well, good night. Good night. Oh, Mr. Dugan. Uh, oh, yes. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Great fella. You never can tell with a man like Mr. Dugan for a friend of yours. Anything can happen. Election's coming up. Hey. What's the matter? Good night. I'm glad to see you got a job. Now, wait a minute. I told you I'd get you a job, and I will get you one. We'll try just one. Hey. Ice cream? Ice cream. Come on. And when we get inside, don't ask any questions. Uh, you want with nuts or without nuts? With nuts. Spencer, the ice cream kid. <laughs> Damn it. He's always got a cold hand for you, but a warm heart. Have a cigar. Oh, thank you. And don't forget, whenever you're in trouble, remember, remember the, the name, name Danny. <laughs> How could I forget it? <laughs> Read Tisa Keffer. She's just here from the old country. She doesn't know much about ice cream yet. Well, then with we'll... nuts. Oh, yes. 
Then we learn you something about ice cream. Sit down, make yourself comfortable. I scream, you scream, we all scream for Svensson's ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> now, what will it be? A Svensson special? Is that the most expensive thing in the house? No, the double Svensson special. That's the most expensive. That's the tickets. You did well this summer. Oh, huh? great. Bring two of them for her and three for me. Huh? Well, we didn't have much to eat today. Oh. <laughs> the work I'm going to get in here, eating double Swenson specials? Now, sit back, relax, and fatten up. The heavy work comes afterwards. What heavy hey, work? Hey, look, it's what? still here. What's you know, it? for a nickel, you can, you, can, you can hear the greatest violin music in the world. Hey, Swenson, you got a nickel? Yeah. I'll put it on my bill. It's a very complicated piece of machinery. Save money. Oh, forget it. Tonight we live. Violins, moonlight, ice cream. Go on, say it. You must think I'm a pretty peculiar fella. No, I don't, Mr. Denning. I think you're droll. Oh, droll. Well, that's different from most people. They think I'm slightly off my cocoa. That's because they don't understand. I got ideas. One can easily see that. You know, sometimes I lie awake nights wondering why anybody has to sleep on a cot in somebody's kitchen. A six and a shaft bedroom or take home neckties like you to make in the middle of the night. Why, nobody has to make five dollars a week either, not when you're going to make ten. Ten? Sure, maybe even fifteen. Fifteen. Good appetite, hmm? <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. You can eat the flag. It's candy. And don't let anybody tell you different. I'm going to amount to something. I'll study and learn. What do you want to learn? Everything. I figure I need to live 2,000 years, minimum. Perhaps somebody will invent something. It's a wonderful country. Yeah. Well, the first 100 years of my life, I'm going to be a lawyer. That's what I'm saving my money for. Did you go to school? No, not yet. But I study law books all the time. And, and as soon as I get enough money together, there's a correspondence school in Chicago. They mail you the lessons. And the clients, they come by mail too. Yeah, I don't care how they come, as long as they come. I don't stop there. Next, I'm going to be an alderman, Mr. Dugan Willie. And then a judge. And from a judge, you get to be a senator. And from a senator, you get to be a, a well, anything. President? No, 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 you have to be born in this country in order to be president. I came here when I was three years old. But I could give advice to presidents. I could sit with him all the time and, and walk after him when he's shaving and tell him my opinion. I believe you could. Sure. Teddy, I would say. Or Tom, or Dick, or Joe, whichever the case may be. Um, I don't think you ought to sign that declaration of war. War? What war? All right, a declaration of summer, or winter, or spring. And then uh, he'd look at me, you know, silent for a minute, and he'd say, uh, Mark, you've come up from the people. You understand summer, winter, and spring. I'm going to take your advice. Tell me, does that sound crazy to you? No. Only my papa said it's shorter and better. Anything a man can imagine is possible. Yeah, that's what I mean. Then one of these days, I'll come walking down the street. Nothing will be the same except my name. I walk around and say hello, give presents to everybody. Grumbach, Mrs. Faludi, Herman. Even you. Well, how do you know I'll be there? Why, where will you be? Walking around, saying hello, giving presents to everybody. Well, first give me one dollar five cents. Swenson, something tells me you need a couple of people to work for you. You can clean up these dishes and uh, these few over here, and we're even. Well, you're even with me. Hurry your pay. Two dollars a week. Huh? Me, three. Listen, Danik. And you're lucky I don't report you for violating the sanitary code. What sanitary code? Listen, 
Section 2, Article 3, Paragraph 4 says that specifically oh. if and whereas. See what I mean? You're right. This is a much better job than washing dishes. When are you going to turn out that light? I'm working. You're not working. You were out with that Mark Denick tonight, weren't you? He got me a job. Uh-huh. First thing you know, you'll be getting serious. Oh, Jenny, you're so funny. I can't afford to get serious. How can you say such a thing? And he can't afford to get serious either. Of all the people in the world who won't get serious, you pick the two who won't. We'll see that you remember that. Oh, don't worry. I have to get Papa over and the children. And Mr. Denick has big plans of his own. No, he has no time for me. And I have no time for him. Then blow out the light and go to sleep. All right, Yurishka. Seam. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm, Miss Keppers. We're awake today. Yes, sir. All right, Grobach, I'm here. Hello, Gussie. Hello, Tim. Hello, Mike. Hello. Hello. Well, are you ready for your citizenship lesson? No, no, not until lunchtime. I'm a busy man. I'm a busy man, too. I'm teaching rule cut lunchtime. Rule cut, my competitor? Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> With him, you're wasting your time. That dope, he'll never pass. No. No. No, all right, all right, I'll never pass neither. But I'm an old man. 52 years my last birthday. It's hard to learn. Well, all right, come on. How many houses in Congress? Get out, get out. American businessman, I gotta take the test like a baby. How many no, houses? I know, I know, I know. How many houses in Congress? Hey, mm. Rolko, he knows how many houses in Congress? Mm. Well, I know too. If somebody asks me, then I, I get all mixed up. Can't answer me. What do you do in front of the examiner? When I get in front of that examiner, I know it's so good, nobody can get me mixed up. Not even the president. All right. How many houses in Congress? Uh, well, I should know from a disease how many houses in Congress. How many? Two. Oh, sure. Yes, two. 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 Two, not one, not three, but two, two. Why can't I remember two? Such an easy number. What are they? <clears throat> what are they? Now, one is filled with senators. Mm -hmm. The other... Not the other one is filled with, I don't know, Mark. It's you know, such a long word. You've got to know it. The examiner will ask you every question in the book. Yeah? You've got insurance. He wouldn't leave out just one little question. Yeah, I oh, got yeah, it. Sure, sure, sure. You're so familiar with him. You had breakfast with him in bed this morning. Now, listen, I'm not trying. Hey, 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 don't talk to me. Just ask me questions. What's the capital of New York? Albany. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> How many states in the USA? Uh, now listen. You're playing games with me? I know how many states in the USA. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> and I wouldn't answer such a, such a funny question. All right, give me the pledge. The pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the USA. Don't and abbreviate. To... Don't taunt me. You ain't my boss. And to the republic for which it stands. One nation in, uh, um, in, uh... In what? What in what? In nothing. It's a word. You're trying to trick me. Indivisible. There ain't no word like that. You contradicting the Constitution. It's right there on the wall. It's right here in the book. Well, show me. All right, I'll show you. 
Good morning, girls. It's all right, Vinka. Don't forget to sign. Good morning. Hey, hey! Tescio! Look, he covered up the flags and the legions. Calm down, Grunberg, dear. I love the flag and the legions as much as you. Vinka, you got anything against the legions? I love the legions as much as him. What are you doing here now, anyway? I told you not to bother my girls before lunchtime. Before lunchtime, Vinka. Lunch? Well, wait, wait! Now, listen, Tescio, this is my factory. They wouldn't... Lunch! You see, Grumbach, dear, I never interfere with another man's business. I know how it is. But later this afternoon, I've got to be at the pier. Grumbach, dear, am I getting a shipment? Shipment? Listen how he talks about people. Who loves people more than me? You? Who brings them to a free country? You? No. You. All right, make your collections already and get out of here. I'm ready, ladies. One down. The one dollar. Mr. Teskew, I'm making payments almost six months already. And I'm making six payments a whole here year. I'm a whole year and two weeks. My so dear lucky. little chickens, if it's worth to you only one dollar a week to get over your poor old folks. He's got my dollar. Yeah, six I... dollars, Tisa Kefish. Six dollars? Miss Tisa Kefish, I know. A wonderful payment. You keep up like this, and in a year, maybe even in six months, your papa and your family will be over. Yes. But maybe you shouldn't work so hard. You might lose your good looks. Very important. Note that down. Miss Tisa Kepesh, six dollars. Get a receipt. Ah, Denek, dear. Giving out free advice again. I would like to see the day when you get paid for your advice. Get a receipt. <laughs> Give me a receipt, please. Oh, you want a receipt? Give her a receipt. You want something special to say, or just lovingly yours, six dollars? <laughs> you see, Denek, dear, we have nothing to hide. Everything about board. See that he signs it. <laughs> Listen to him, girl. Sign it, please. Oh, I love you, Denek, dear. Mm -hmm. We are men of the world. We understand each other, huh? I don't know if you understand me, but I understand you. I don't trust so many white teeth in one face. You don't like a man just because he has teeth? Mm. That's not reasonable. Maybe, but still, if I had anybody to bring over, I'd tell him it was quicker to swim. Miss Kefish? Just a minute. I'm acting as her attorney. Temporarily. It's legal. Thank you, Mr. Attorney. Keep studying. Just showing your ignorance. Uh, don't go in. Why not? Shh. There was a little trouble. You quit. I quit? Why did I quit? Well, even Svensson can't say that about Teddy Roosevelt and get away with it. Oh. I counted on that job. It paid good money. Oh, now, wait a minute. Mom, You're worried about... Why did you have to fight with him? You're always fighting everybody. You're trying to change me. Already. You just met me and you're trying to change me. Well, everything changes. Papa, I don't always... like a woman to change me. A woman starts worrying about you, the next thing you know, you got five kids and you're worrying about her. Man's better off with law books. Well? I'll go and see if Swenson won't give me back my job. Now, wait, wait. You worry about a job, Swenson. You already said enough. Oh, Rochelle, I'll get you a million jobs. Again? All right. Here, hold this a minute. I want to show you something. Jobs. Tickets for the Fourth Ward picnic. We sell them, we get 10 cents commission each ticket. Now, the more tickets you sell, the more money you make. Simple arithmetic. I got to sell more than anybody. Why you? Because I want to make an impression on Assemblyman Dugan. It's very important. He'll be making nominations for the election soon. There's 50. Well, I don't know 50 people. You don't know? I know a place where there are 50 people just dying to meet you. Have you ever been there? Where? Here. See? Oh. Come on. No, 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 no. That isn't good at all. We're going to review now once more. If you remember the words I told you before, you have the secret of the two-step. What are the words? Light and airy. Good. Light and airy. Remember. All right? Music. And left step, left step. Every 
everybody escort the ladies back to the chairs. Mr. Wubberman, you do not escort a lady back like an ox. Only an ox you escort back like an ox. <laughs> Who's calling horn? You came here for the social graces. You're going to learn the social graces if you never get out of here alive. Watch me, if you please. And... <laughs> Much obliged. My pleasure. Now watch. If you please. I hope I do anticipate enough. Thank you. Adieu. Until later. See what I mean? Kinda. Say, Mario. Yes? Tisa. Herman, Jenny. Tisa's here. Oh, hello, Georgie. Hello, Tisa. Yeah. What are you doing here with him? Don't worry, Yurishka. We didn't come to dance. You oh. told me you were working tonight, but... Oh, you look so beautiful Herman, in that nice come here. hat. I was watching you. That professor is all wrong. <laughs> yeah. You're much more graceful than an ox. Oh, much. Hmm? I saw an ox. Who does he think he is, that Wiener Schnitzel? Shh, well, if he's so important, what's he doing on Second Avenue? Bouncing up and down like a monkey on a string. And for 50 cents a lesson. Yeah, you're right. Look, hmm? for 50 cents, you can buy one of these tickets. Have a free meal, a boat ride, dancing, entertainment, and it's for a great cause. If it's for such a great cause, how many tickets have you bought? I don't have to buy any. I'm the cause. Georgie. Why don't you buy a ticket? Oh, I would buy a ticket if I had someone to go with me. Well, what's the matter with her? Oh, that's wonderful. Sure. Well, I'll go. I'll take four. Here you are. All right, ladies and gentlemen, get your dancing positions. Remember, light and airy. And... Lisa, will you take a dance with me? Hey, wait a minute. What's the matter? She came with me. Besides, we're in business together, huh? But the one who takes me to the picnic dances with me. And like to marry me. And like to marry Come on, hurry up with that beer. How you going, Jack? We need all of us. Gentlemen, I take pleasure in introducing a great neighborhood favorite. A little girl who went from Columbia Street to the Heights, Coney Island. Our own Mamie O'Houlihan. <laughs> Silly question. I got rid of all mine, Mr. Day. Me too. Oh, too. I think I got all my hands. Oh. Oh. You still got two left. But uh, well, all right, keep it for a souvenir. I got rid of all mine, Mr. Danny. He did not. I saw him throwing them throwaways in the bushes. You're dead, huh? Mm. Now listen, if you don't tell me where you threw them, you don't get a cone. Well, buy me a cone first. I already bought you three. I don't like. Oh. 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 
Now listen. Show me the bush. They cost money. Nothing doing. Now take. Here, will you hold this? Now listen, you. You want to bust in the nose? Where are those handbills? Give me a cigar first. Yeah, give me a cigar. You want a cigar? That's a cigar. Oh, are you little grafters? Thanks a lot, Mr. Denny. That's okay. You're welcome. Where'd you get this? This is cute. I found it. Here, you better hold it until we find the mother. Yes. Don't cry. She likes it. Every year, it's the same thing. They give me the hardest job. Lost and found. I'm in charge. Say, uh, Tom, you see this? Who is that, Denick? Where'd you get this? Some kids are passing them out. Excuse me. Hey, hey, that's my baby. It is. Yes, it is. Where did you find her? Where you left her. Oh, indeed. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, I was pretty worried. I was worried, too. Oh, have a cigar. Oh, and uh, don't forget, whenever you're in trouble, remember the name, Denick. Oh, <laughs> what a relief. Wow. Assemblyman Dugan. Getting in a few innings for yourself, eh, Denick? Uh, you already met Miss Kepper. Yes, we've met. Uh, Denick. Oh, you saw that, huh? Yes. I wish you'd drop in my office first thing in the morning. I'd like to have a little talk with you. Gee, that'll be great, Mr. Dugan. Uh, I've been wanting to talk to you, too. Oh, good. Then we can talk to each other. Goodbye. Hey, Tom. Gee, you know what he wants to talk to me about, don't you? Oh. This is it. What is it? Miss Keppish, shake hands with your next alderman. Oh, that is it. Good. <laughs> Yes, it's very noisy. Look at all these silly people. Yes, they are very silly. The whole boat is a big trap. Well, maybe some people enjoy this silliness. What good is it? Where does that lead to? Oh, Herman. On the clothesline. <laughs> Bad Herman. He doesn't watch his step or toss away his whole life with things like this. Give up his whole future. See what I mean? He'll never get any place. Tita! Tita! The ring. I got it. We're engaged. <laughs> engaged? Oh, you little <laughs> It's beautiful. Oh, I've Congratulations. <laughs> What's the matter? You can't shake a man's hand and say congratulations? Yeah. Congratulations. Look at him. The mouse thinks he's eating cheese, and all the time he's caught in a big trap. Huh? A trap? Listen, you might... Oh, don't argue have... with him. Come on, yeah. we'll tell Georgie. Make him feel better. Yeah. He's a nice fellow, not it. like some people we know. No feelings, no sentiments. No nothing. You see? Just like I told you. Hooked. I've seen it happen. A man starts out single with a dream. He's got a chance. All of a sudden, he meets a pretty girl. Double. Pretty soon, he's tripled. The dream explodes right in his face, and he's through for life. Not me. Not me. I didn't say anything. I love you, baby. Another mouse nibbling at the cheese. Thanks. 
Why can't a man and woman just be friends? Like us. It's possible. <laughs> Close friends. I've heard of it. Yeah, trouble with women, even friends. The minute you kiss them, they want to marry you. It doesn't have to be. No. You mean you'd let a friend kiss you and that would be the end of it? If you were a very good friend and if I liked him very much. Well, friend. No, Mark, no more. Why not? One more kiss and we stop being friends. I don't care. No, Mark, no. For your own good, no more. No! All right. Not so good looking anyway. Just felt sorry for you, that's all. Listen, if I wanted to kiss you, I'd kiss you, whether you liked it or not. Sleep well, Alderman Dennett. Hello, Dennick. Hello, Mark. How have you been? When you say hello to me, Ali, take your hat off. How are you? Huh? Can you stick around, fellas? I'll have you working for me in a couple of hours. Well, what makes you think so? You'll find out. Oh, Come in. Here I am, Mr. Dugan. Yeah. All ready for our little talk. Well, I've been waiting for you. Yeah, right on time, see? <laughs> you know, that was a pretty smart stunt you pulled with them throwaways yesterday. Uh, I'm glad you liked it. Yeah, it made me think a lot about you. Now, what did you think, Mr. Dugan? Well, it made me think that uh, we don't need you anymore. Huh? Don't need me anymore? Now, we got enough belt pushers around here who ain't got any grand ideas about themselves. Mr. Dugan, you've always led me to believe. What did I always lead you to believe? Well, that you were grooming me to run for alderman. Alderman? You? <laughs> Nicholas P. Cassidy is going to be alderman. Cassidy? What reason have you got to run Cassidy? I don't need any reason. He's my brother-in-law. And I don't see any reason for you to be here either. You ain't even fit to be an errand boy around now, here. Now, wait a minute, Mr. Dugan. You can't talk to me like that. Oh, I can, huh? Why? Because you're such an important man? I'm not Because a... you've got such high ideas about yourself? Now, listen, Mr. Listen, Denick, I'm wise to you. You've been going around blowing off your bazoo about being a lawyer. What'd you ever do about it? I've been... Nothing. I know you're kind. You're worth a dime a dozen. Every time I sneeze, I hit a hundred like you. Whenever you're in trouble... You've remember... got me wrong, Mr. Dugan. You'll see I will be a lawyer. Well, I won't believe it until I see your diploma, and I won't believe that until I see it framed. Now, beat it. Come on, you're late for my lesson. The lunch time is almost over. Where have you been? I was never mind. Don't waste time. Wait oh, anyway, sit down. Uh, Mr. Grumbach, uh, I, I want to ask you a serious question. Mm -hmm. I don't like serious questions. Every time I answer such a question, it costs me money. Here's the book. Ask me them questions. I'm ready. Will you lend me $100? Will you lend me a... 
Depends on you, see? What did I tell you? Now, you've got to lend it to me. It's for my correspondence course in law. I need it. What's the matter? All of a sudden, you have to be a lawyer? I've got to prove something, see? It's important to me. Mm. I can't wait anymore. Now, come on, let me have it. You've got it in a bank. What are you holding onto it for? Look at him. Look at him. He's wild. Not so easy to make a hundred dollars, young man. All right, I'll give you a hundred dollars worth of lessons. Do you now, I'll pay me in advance. Who needs a hundred dollars worth of lessons? <laughs> hundred dollars. Next month, I'll be a citizen. I wouldn't need any more lessons. Don't forget, you already failed three times. Right, There's well, no I... law that says you can't fail four times or eight times or even ten times. Well, well, if I fail once more, I'm getting a new teacher. Mr. Grumbach, you got to give me a hundred dollars. I've been every place, seen everybody. You're my last hope. Now, come on. Let me have it. Now, get out. Go and dream up a hundred dollars like you dream up everything else. I've been watching for you. I've had lunch on the roof. Well, what did Dugan say? Dugan? Ah, I, uh, I just came to a big decision in my life. I decided I'm not going to be an orderman. Not going to be an orderman? Oh, Mark, have you told Dugan? Sure, I told him. You know, there's no such thing as friendship in politics. But you knew that yesterday and the day before. Well, what if I did? Can a man change? Can it come over him all of a sudden? What did Dugan say about friendship? I did the talking. I told him I didn't have to be an alderman. Who says you have to do it that way? Got my own career. I know. First, a lawyer. Then a judge. Then a senator. That's right. Now, be a lawyer, too. You'll see. Got a hundred dollars saved. Oh, my. Sure, you didn't know that, did you? That's wonderful. Now, all I need is... All I need is a hundred more. All right, suppose it does take me another five years to save it. I'll only be 30. 30. Five years is not very long. Lots of men didn't start until they were 30. Look at, uh, at Teddy Roosevelt. That's right. He's quite old. Sure. All I need is a little luck, that's all. I'm young. Plenty of time. I don't need anybody to help me. Not Dugan. Nobody. I'll do it all by myself. <laughs> well, what are you crying for? <laughs> Nobody asked you to cry. Darling. What's the matter? You didn't eat no dinner. I'm not hungry. You got to eat. You got to keep up your strength. A nice piece of Vina roast broth is good tonight. I kept it hot. Oh. You're reading letters from your papa? Yes. So that's your papa. Ah, I didn't see him before. Mm, I'm crazy for them little beards. Gives a man class. <laughs> Well, but he's a devil. I can't wait until I meet him. He'll be here soon, huh, darling? Listen, Dolly. The next Mr. Faludi and me, we are going to play a little cards. Maybe you'd like to join, huh? Mrs. Faludi, you're just about the best friend I have over here. I'd like to ask you. Don't you think that sometimes a young person needs help just as much as an older person? I think young people need more help even. Yeah. Oh, I don't feel like playing cards. Thanks very much. What's the matter, kid? Are you worrying something is something wrong? No, I go for a little walk. If you get hungry later, you've got my permission to go into the icebox. If I get hungry later. Oh, 
Ah, shut up, you crazy Cossacks. Surprise. Come in, come in. Come in. Get out. I hope I'm not disturbing you. Oh, such a nice, sweet little chicken like you. <laughs> oh, excuse my appearance. Sit down. Take off your coat. Oh, I only came for a minute. Even for a minute? All right. <laughs> do what do I owe the pleasure of your visit? Well, Mr. Tesco. Oh, charming, charming. Uh, have a little brandy. Mr. Tesco, I would like to get my money back. I have deposited $106.50 with you, and I want $100 right now. A young lady wants her money back, so what can I do? I'll have to give it. <laughs> you mean you will? Sure I will. You see me, Skippish? Oh. Everything above board. <laughs> oh, thank you, Mr. Tesco. Oh, thank you so much, and good night. Wait, let me help you with your coat. Thank you. I know it ain't none of my business, but I hate to see a nice little girl like you forget about bringing her papa over. Oh, I did not forget. I just need the money here. That's all. Oh, so uh, you still would like to have your papa? Like? Papa? <laughs> you see, I'm just a ticket agent, a simple, plain man. But sometimes I, I can arrange miracles. Sometimes I can uh, figure it out so that a family comes over in one month without any payment. Mr. Tesco! How can they get here without payments? How can they come? Let's have some brandy. How? Well, How? You see, I, I'm not doing it for everybody. Only for special people I make certain arrangements, like, for instance, to work it off oh. after they come off the boat. You like the idea? Oh, that's a wonderful idea. What kind of work is it? Come, I'll show you. Papa buys up forests. Oh, shit. Yeah. See this contract here? Yes. All I have to do is fill in the name of your papa yes. here. Here the name of the Johnson Construction Company. Mm -hmm. Here comes my name. Here you sign for your papa. And the next thing, he is on the boat. <laughs> you mean you know already which boat? Oh, the biggest and best boat in the world for your papa. Not just a little shrimp boat. The Queen Victoria. Huh? Where do I sign? <laughs> And I give him the biggest connections in forests I got, in Washington. Washington? Oh, he'd love that. Papa's a very worldly man. He loves to be in the heart of a country. The capital. Give me the pen. Yeah. I'll be able to see him at least once a month. There. Let me see. That's all right. Now we'll celebrate. Yes, celebrate on the concertina. That's a fine way to celebrate. My dear little chicken, you are not such a green horn. No, Mr. Tesco, but I do know that bachelor gentlemen sometimes get lonely <laughs> in the evening. My papa explained that to me when I was ten years old. He's pretty smart. Goodbye, Mr. Tesco. Wait, and, and I... Thank you, thank you. She got away, huh? Yeah. But her papa didn't. That smart fellow. Try this. Bohunks. <laughs> Good morning, Miss Faludi. Here's your mail. And a special delivery for Mark Denick. Oh. Mark? Yeah? Special delivery. What you've been waiting for, your corresponding course. It's here. It's here, my destiny, all the way from Chicago, Mrs. Faludi, darling. You're a great woman. If you didn't have the next Mr. Faludi already picked out, I would apply for the job myself. Close your eyes, Felix. Ah, you bought me my future for $100. Grumbach. 
Grumbach, the millionaire, he couldn't invest the hundred dollars. Mrs. Faludi, from where she got it, I'll never know. But she can do it. The borders don't pay the rent. She sends money to Europe. But she's got a hundred dollars and she gives it to me. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Faludi, I love you. <laughs> Why don't you open it already? All right. <laughs> yeah, I can't get it open. Here, here, here. Sure, take a knife. Grumbach, I hope the first case I have is against now, you. please, please. Don't get me excited. This afternoon, I'm going to become a citizen. Oh, um, yes, uh, Mrs. Faludi, uh, don't you forget, you and the next Mr. Faludi, you're coming down to be my witnesses. All right, all right. I told you already 50 times we'd be there. Sure, Kumbach. I have known you for years. Without me there, I'm sorry for you. What do you mean you're yeah, sorry? Yeah, and don't come to me anymore for lessons when you fail. I don't need you anymore. I know everything upside down and backwards. Well, that's the way it'll sound. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to this, Tisa. It's a letter from the dean himself. He welcomes me to the college and wishes me every success. You wait till Mr. Dugan hears of this. <laughs> Torts, contracts, partnership. I've been reading law books for years. Now I'll know what they mean. Look at this. The crown prince is coming to America. The crown prince? So everybody's excited. They've got his picture in the paper. Now, what's the matter? A crown prince shouldn't come to America. Only poor people. <laughs> you didn't live where I came from. I know this crown prince. If Teddy Roosevelt knew what kind of a crown prince he is, he wouldn't be rushing down to the dock to meet. Teddy Roosevelt knows what he's doing. <laughs> and look at the boat he's coming on. Not the same cattle boat I came on, but on an A1 first class steamship, the Queen Victoria. The Queen Victoria? Yes, it is the Queen Victoria. Papa is on it. <gasps> You be here. Wonderful. <laughs> She's sailing next next Wednesday. Already? Well, where did you get the money? She she uh she didn't need any money. Didn't need any money? No. 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 Mr. Tesco. Mr. Tesco took care of everything. All I had to do was just to sign a contract and he sent the tickets. And now Papa and I can pay for it afterwards. You signed a contract? Mm hmm Why didn't you tell me? Tesco's been pulling that trick for years. Where did he say he was going to send you, Papa? Only to Washington. Now, that's not very far away. And Papa's going to work in a forest there. He's going to... Washington? That's 3,000 miles away from here. You mean, it's, it's, it's not the Washington down, down here, it's, it's the Washington up there? Yes, yes, it's the Washington up there. And he'll be there for years before he pays off those tickets. No. No. That can't be true. You signed one of those crooked labor contracts. It happened in my family, to my brothers. I was there at Ellis Island. You know how the immigrants come from one side and the people to meet them from the other. Yes. Well, my brothers are there. Happy. But there is this ticket agent. He takes them away. They don't know what's happening. I don't know either. Before I finish saying hello, I say goodbye to my brothers to coal miners. I was so mad, I nearly killed the ticket agent. Well, if I was there, I would have. Tita. Hey. What brings you? Give me back my contract. What? Give me back my contract. Oh, my little girl, you are excited. What's wrong, may I? I don't want my papa to go to Washington up there, 3,000 miles away. Give me back my contract. Who is telling you these things? You fooled me. You were telling me lies. You're going to send my papa away for years and years to pay you back. But I'm not going to let you. Where are the contracts? Stop that. Now listen, Miss Kepesh. I'm not in the charity business, and you are over 21. You signed the contract, and when your papa comes over, he will live up to the contract. Mr. Tesco, you can't do this. 
You can't. Well, uh, that depends. Oh, no, my dear little chicken, maybe not for someone I like and who likes me. No, uh, no, Mr. No, Tesco, no, 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 Mr. Tesco! Step back a little. I wasn't, I mean, she, she would, I, you, you go, go, shut up! Tesco, if you want to live a long, happy life, give her back what she signed. Help, help! Give her back the contract before I shake it out of here. Bingo! Uh, hello. I was just going out. Stay here. Your boss will want a witness while I kill him. Let me go! I ain't got the contract. What? I sold it. I got to buy it back. That, that's right, he sold it. How much? $350. $350? You've got to be a millionaire to have $350. You're lying. You can kill me, but you won't get it back without $350. Stay away from Miss Kettish. Come on. I'll get him the money. Where? Where, I don't know, but I'll get it from someplace. And go ahead, go ahead. Ask me questions. Ask me anything. How many houses in Congress? Two. One house is senators, the other one is representatives, right? Yeah. All right, continue. Um, go ahead, go ahead. Give the Pledge of Allegiance. Oh, the Pledge. Mm. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. One nation, now listen to this, listen. Indivisible. <laughs> Quiet, please. If you can't read, you can't be a citizen. Who can't read? I'd like to tell you something. Quiet. He don't like me. Oh, you ought to go straight to the judge and... Yes, yes, I mustn't get excited. I gotta keep calm. Look who's here, Mark. Oh, Mr. Grumbach, I've gotta talk to you. Shh. Can't you read it? It says quiet. Take your hat off. Come on, Mr. Grumbach. What are you doing here anyhow? I told you I don't need you anymore. I don't. I got the whole book in my head. Grumbach. Grumbach, you've got to lend me $350. What? Shh. Grumbach. What's the matter with you? Are you crazy? First it was a hundred dollars, today it's three hundred and fifty dollars, tomorrow it'll be, it'll be a million. Listen, Groom, I'm not asking for myself this time. It's for Teaser. Teaser? She's in trouble. What? Bad trouble. Help her, Grumbach. No. I'm appealing to you like a father. I ain't your father. Just because I let you give me lessons, it don't mean that we're related in the family. Please, Mr. Stop Grumbach. Stop bothering me. Can't you see I'm trying to be a citizen? Listen, Grumbach, if you don't give me that three hundred and fifty dollars for Teaser, you'll never be a citizen. I'll mix you up. Oh, I'll get away from me. You'll mix me up. I know everything. Uh, indivisible? Your fourth test, Grumbach. Two houses. You're like a drowning man, Grumbach. Representatives? If you fail this time, yes, Grumbach. I'm not going to fail. I got the whole book in my head. Uh -huh. Now, capitals, Washington. Now, what's the capital of New York? Albany. Wrong. Wrong? It's Buffalo. Buff? Why, oh, you liar. You always told me it was Albany. See, so you're getting mixed up already. Buffalo. Buffalo. What's the capital of Detroit? Michigan. Wrong. Illinois is the capital of Michigan. Illinois? Illinois! Give him the money! Hey, get away from me. You're mixing me up. I'll get out for $350. No. $350. No! Shh. I told you no, no, and no, and that's all there is to it. All right, come on. All right. All right. Only remember this when you get inside, Grumbach. What? One nation invisible. Oh, yeah. Yeah, now, wait a minute. No, that's wrong. That's wrong, I know. Invisible. No. You see? Hey, wait a minute. It's invisible. In in Look, I just had it. I haven't done it now. Where's my book? My book. Oh, wait! You... Mark! It's my book. Your book? What do you mean it's your book? I've been... Goodbye. Mrs. Callahan. Yes, sir. Bye. Gotcha. Here. More. Roomba. Roomba. Just a please. Sir, just a minute. He called me. Uh, sir, I'm not ready yet. I'm in... Room three. Everything is fine, Grumba. Oh, sure. Grumba, I can still save you if you give me the money. Money? No. All right, Grumba. Just remember this when you get inside. Nine houses in Congress, yes. 53 states in the yes, Union. Yes, but, Mark, tell me one thing, please. What is the capital of Detroit? There is no capital. Oh. Uh, but... What is your name? Albany, New York. Pledge allegiance. 
to the He fainted. Mark, he fainted. Well, throw some water on him. Tell him his name. Yes, sir. Glad you came to see us, Mr. Tesco. Mr. Brown here will follow through. Yeah, we get to work on the case right away. I don't like to make trouble for no young lady, even one like her. But I got my duty. Sure, he's got his duty. The dame is no good. She ought to be deported. Quiet, then, Cut. That's for Mr. Brown to say. Well, if what you say is true, she'll be deported. Good day, gentlemen. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Brown. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Thank you. Now you talk. Now you shoot your mouth off. Inside, you are a dummy. Didn't I say she, was, she left your place at half past 12? Just like you told me. One o'clock, I told you. Didn't I say she drank brandy? Guzzled, I told you, not drink. Guzzled. Quit picking on me. Shut up! I don't forget that you stood there and let that Denick slap my face in front of a lady he slapped me. Yeah, hard, too. Mm -hmm. Cover. Easy, take it easy. Get over to the boarding house now. And watch. All right. See that she doesn't run away. All right. Stay there day and night, understand? Day and night? When do I sleep? You don't sleep. I don't sleep? You don't sleep, understand? I understand, I understand. Yeah. watching the house. I shouldn't be here. My name getting mixed up in all he this... He didn't see you, Herman, dear. It was very clever of you to sneak in the back. The sneak teeth out the same way. I don't like sneaking. Don't like it at all. What kind of cousin you got they should want to deport her? They don't want to deport her. Tescu wants to deport her. It's a frame-up. She didn't do anything. There, yeah, darling. Everything's packed. We'll find a place to hide you. You'll see. But isn't it wrong to run away when you haven't done anything bad? First worry if there's a place to run, then worry if it's wrong. Yes, but I... You want Tesco should deport you just when your papa's coming? Miss Kippish home? Uh -huh. Ah, look who's here. Now he comes, the dope, when it's too late. Come in. You couldn't give up the money for Tesco and Mark asked for it nicely? Miss Holiday, please, shut up. I, I want to help Miss Kepesh, but uh, money I couldn't give. My fingers wouldn't let go of a penny. I don't know, maybe, maybe it's a sickness with me. Miser, what do you want? We please, should cry please, for you? Please, please, Miss Kepesh. I got a sister in Canarsie. Nobody will ever find you by my sister. It's very healthy there. Oh, the air is marvelous, pure. It's a gorgeous country in Canarsie. It's gorgeous country right here on Columbia Street. Oh, I'll bring you a few bundles to work on. Uh, naturally, since you're staying with my sister, I won't pay you. Miser, even five dollars would help. Well? No, Mr. Grumbach, but I thank you. And I do hope you have another chance to be a citizen. Such kindness. In a time like this, she thinks of me. Please. I gotta do it. One, two, three, four, five dollars. Goodbye. Drop dead. Shut up, I'll go over there. I'll kill him. Cossack singing on top of your head. Oh, look out. Mark. Jesus, I got an inspiration. It came to me unexpected, like snow in the summer. Can I come in? Come in. What is it? There are millions of laws in this country. Some to send back people. And some to keep them here. Keep them here? People like me? That's the lucky thing. You're a woman. Otherwise, this could never happen. I'm a citizen. That's who a citizen. I marry a girl. She's in trouble. They want to deport her. Can they? No. Why? Because. Because she becomes a citizen by marrying a citizen. Are you sure of this? I looked it up. It's true. You become a citizen overnight. He's an overnight. No examinations. No waiting years for papers. No red... Well, what's the matter? Well, don't you like it? Well, what are you crying about? I don't know. A girl cries. Whatever happens to her, a girl cries. A girl? Oh. 
Well, listen, if, if, if you don't like me, I'll, I'll be a husband in name only. Oh, that won't be necessary. No? No. <gasps> oh, Mark. Oh, Mark. Well, well, we'll have to do it right away before somebody comes. No. No, I, I can't let you do this. But I'm only making you a citizen. No. You don't think you care now. Just like the night on the boat when you kissed me, remember? Uh -huh. But what'll happen to the senator and the judge and the advisor to the president? Well, that'll all happen just the same. Well, maybe it won't happen to me, but... Well, the man has a son. And with a father like me, he doesn't have to become advisor to the president. He can become president. Oh, Mark, you're crazy. <laughs> Hello, Dernick. Hello, Riley. Who's your friend? Miss Gappis? Yes, sir. I have a warrant for your arrest. Now, wait. Don't, don't make any trouble, Dernick. He's not going to make any trouble. It's all right. This is all very foolish. You're just wasting your time with that. Yeah? Yeah. Well, my orders are to bring in Miss Gappis. All right, Miss, get your coat. This your bag? Yes, sir. All right, here it is. I'll take it. Who are you? You'll find out. Oh, Derek, eh? Derek! Everything is all right. Wait a minute. Where do you think you're going? This lady has rights, and I'm here to protect him, sir. Let him in. Take my word for it. that way. All right. Tisa! Tisa, don't worry. You be a brave kid, huh? Tisa, uh, if I'm not here next week when the boat gets in, go and see Papa. I will. All right, miss. Sit down. Take it easy. You too. Anna. Jenny? Yes? Don't tell him anything. I won't. Don't fail. Excuse me, miss. Right. All right, Mike. Let's go. Don't rent a room, Mrs. Spalooney. I'll have her back in no time. No, better. All right, you may sit down, miss. Several points appear quite unnecessary for this hearing. Weren't these facts brought out before the Immigration Department yesterday? Yes, Your Honor. But the Immigration Department didn't ask for the writ of habeas corpus. These people did. Very well. You may continue, Mr. Teskew. Like I told him, Your Honor, that girl there makes me more payments and faster than anybody else I've ever seen. I ask myself how. She makes six dollars a week at Grunberg's. How can she pay me never less than three dollars a week? At one time, she paid me even six dollars. I tell you how. She makes money, but not in a nice way. But that's not true. I work nights. I took home bundles. I wash dishes at Svensson's. I spit on Swenson's. Your Honor, if... Your Honor, this is all a waste of time. You can't deport this girl. She's a citizen. Of course, what? Sarge. What? 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 You say this woman is a citizen? Well, practically, as soon as we get married, she'll be a citizen. But you're not married to her now. No, sir, but that's easy to fix. I'm a citizen, you're a judge, she's a woman. Marry us. Are you suggesting that this corp enter into a conspiracy with you to evade the immigration laws? Huh? Oh, no, Your Honor, he's not trying to make a conspiracy. He didn't want to get married. He's just trying to help me, doing it for me. Jesus. Your Honor, I'm in love with the girl. I want to get married. This is the most outrageous thing I've heard in my 25 years on the bench. You have the effrontery to stand before this court and suggest publicly that I enter into a fraud. I know my rights. Quiet. I won't be quiet. There's justice in this country. You listen to that big, fat, greasy slob telling all those lies. When I want to talk, you tell me to be quiet. Sit down. Look who is calling me a big, fat, greasy... Uh, what did you say? Slob. Mm. Yeah, uh, uh, <laughs> who says that I'm lying. A man who takes money from a woman. I gave her a hundred dollars. She gave it to him. That's a lie. Mrs. Faludi gave me a hundred dollars. <laughs> that fool's nobody. Where do you think Mrs. Faludi got it? From her. Is that true? Did you give Mrs. Faludi money to give to him? Answer the question. Did you? Yes, Your Honor. Oh. It's perfectly clear what has happened here. Young woman, you can't buy citizenship in this country for $100. 
nor a thousand dollars, nor a million dollars. You'll have to earn it. I remand you to the custody of the immigration authorities for deportation. And I hold you in $500 bail for contempt of court. Bailiff, take him away. Sing it again, Pop. I'd like to learn that song. Sing it in English. Huh? Sing it in English. vocabulary there, Pop. Ah, yeah. I speak English. Thank you. Da, da, da. Goodbye. Goodbye. Little little. You're up. Come on, don't you want to go, or do you like it here? What happened? The judge have a change of heart? I don't know. There's some guy just bailed you out, and they want you in there. Surprise, too. Over there. Guess I should thank you. Even if you are a little late. Yeah. Here, sign this. I suppose I should have given you the hundred dollars when you asked me for it. All right, don't look at me like that. How did I know? Here's your property. Your property. Maybe I should have given you the three hundred and fifty dollars, too. All right, what's the matter? Nothing. Nothing. I went bail for you. I got you out of jail. Five hundred dollars it cost me. Mm hmm yeah. Well, don't stand here. Go on, see her, do something. Get her out before they put her in the boat. She, she's waiting for you. Thank you, Kronbach. Well, I, uh, I owed it to you anyway. I'm a citizen now. <laughs> yeah, they gave me another chance yesterday. And you know a citizen's got to help another citizen. Congratulations, Kronbach. Thank you. Nice boy. Hey, Derek, you loafer. Don't leave town, or I'll have to forfeit the bail. Five hundred dollars. Don't leave city limits. Goodbye, gentlemen. It's the Queen Victoria. It's the Queen Victoria. Yeah. She'll be here soon. Versus. Mr. Guard. Won't you let me out just for one minute to see my papa? He's on the boat. What's the matter with you, girlie? I've said no a hundred times. Please. You're so nice. And you, you even like songs. Sorry. Could you take me to the inspector? 
Maybe he'll let me. Listen, there's a crown prince coming in. All the important people from Washington are here, even the president. Maybe you want me to ask him in here for tea. Hey, Pop, sing me that other song. You know. Da, 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 da. I, you got my list. Is there a tease of Kepi's in here? Yes. Visitor. Visitor? Probably Teddy. Visitors are limited to 10 minutes. Mark. Come on, Tisa. Wait, treating you all right? You came to say goodbye. I came to say I love you. I love you too, Mark. How can you? I'm the one who got you into all this. I'm just a fake. I talked a lot. It comes right down to what I can't do anything for you, for myself. Nobody. Mark, you can't talk like that. Bob, I won't let you. Listen, when I'm in the old country, I'll be reading the papers, looking for your name. You're going to be a lawyer and a senator and an advisor to the president. Yeah. Oh, Mark, you mustn't give up. Remember what my papa said. Anything that a man can imagine is possible. Don't stop imagining. You're a great man. You really believe that about me? In spite of everything? I believe in you, Mark. I love you. I won't be able to see my papa when he gets here. But you'll talk to him. You'll like each other. He'll understand you. And when I'm in the old country, it'll be good to know then that the two men I... I love most in the world will be together. You really believe in me? You don't think I'm a fake? Listen, Tisa, we're all going to be together. Maybe not right now, but someday. And someday you're going to read about how Mark Dennett put his dreams to work, how he studied and learned and did get a diploma. And then you're going to read about how he got a law passed so that crooks like Tescu can't ever pull this kind of trick ever again. And you're going to be reading about this in America. Not in the old country. Because I'm coming to get you. I don't care where you are, I'll come. It may take a year, it may take 10 years, but I'll come. Just keep believing that. Just keep believing. passing by. Try the other exit. Teddy Roosevelt? be here to look after Mark, but you'll take good care of him. He loves you very much. He's a little crazy and irresponsible, 
But the only trouble he ever got into was fighting too hard for the things you stand for. Give him what he wants. It's not very much. He is a good son of yours. And I wish I was your daughter. That was a very nice thing you said to that lady out there. I'm pretty fond of her myself. Oh, I was just saying goodbye to... Your Teddy Roosevelt. Uh, I mean, excuse me. President Roosevelt. Bring on the young man who broke up the parade. Yes, sir. Mark? Is he always violent? Oh, no. Only if, if people say something against you. Mark, you shouldn't have broken up the president's parade. Let him go. But, Mr. President... Let him go. Is this the young man you were talking to our friend about? Yes, sir. And is this the young lady you were shouting in my ear about? Yes, sir. And, Mr. President, like I was trying to tell you, maybe you can do something. And as I tried to tell you, that depends upon what you want me to do. I want you to keep her here. She's a nice girl, believe me. She wants to be an American. This is a most peculiar situation. What would you advise me to do? Look, he's asking me for advice. Well, give it to his honor. I hate to tell you this, Cassidy, but there goes the new alderman. Good luck. Your father will be most happy to see you, and I can't say that I blame him. Oh, thank you, Mr. President. The Admiral will see that you get through. Is everything quite satisfactory now? Mr. President, you certainly have a lot of influence. <laughs> <laughs> That's bully, bully! <laughs> Welcome to America, Papa. 